Okay, we're out here in an apple orchard in the winter time in New York. Uh, the apple trees have lost most of their leaves, but it looks like they're not doing much. But actually, apple plants, apple trees, and, and most other fruit trees and nut trees and perennial plants in general uh, keep track of what happens in the winter. And they really require a, a, a period of, of cool temperatures in the winter in order to be hormonally primed to bloom and have a good fruit crop the following year. And if they don't get that winter chilling requirement, we call it, uh, they, they don't, we don't get a good yield the next year. And so another concern about climate change with apples is actually as the winters get warmer, um, eventually we might reach a point where we won't meet that winter chilling requirement and we won't get as good a yields in the spring. Now here in New York, we're, we're a bit buffered from that because as we all know, it's plenty cold here and it's probably going to take several decades before the climate warming, the, the climate change we're seeing gets to that point where it really jeopardizes us, maybe near the end of the century. But in other parts of the country where they grow lots of fruit and nut crops, like in California, they're right on the edge of meeting that chilling winter requirement for many of their fruit and nut crops. So it's a big, a big concern there and they might be having to literally be uh, changing you know, where they grow some of those crops in order to keep their ag economy going. Uh, so here in New York we have, uh, we have some time to think about adapting and uh, growers with orchards uh, might be thinking when, it's, uh, when the apple trees get old, time to replace some of them, looking at some different varieties that might have uh, different types of winter chilling requirements and also different heat tolerance of course for the summer and frost uh, tolerance uh, for the spring. So um, we have to be uh, getting prepared for, for what's ahead. Despite the negative predictions made in a new study on climate change and wine grapes, making well-reasoned adjustments to our current growing practices may allow us to sidestep some of the harsher consequences of a changing climate. In the Northeast, wild fluctuations in temperature will prove more harmful to grape production than will the overall warming of the climate. It should be possible, however, to minimize the impact of such temperature swings by choosing grape cultivars that are more adaptable or that begin to bud or ripen at different times. Much of the concern in agriculture is focused on a lack of sustainability in terms of water resources. There is the fear that grape growers would be forced to expand into more arid land at higher elevations that was not previously used for agriculture. This, in turn, would place greater strains on available water supplies. Fortunately, it is more likely that grape crops would simply displace other agricultural crops in order to make use of the existing infrastructure, which would place no additional demands on local water availability. In the long run, this would amount to little more than a game of musical chairs, but one in which the number of seats remains constant. Although climate change is far from a welcome state of affairs, it does not automatically signal the end of wine grape production as we know it. The production of maple syrup in the Northeast is a process called maple sugaring. It starts with the sugar maple. While there are many other species of maple trees, they have very low sugar within their sap and therefore are not suitable for making maple syrup. It starts with a tree that is 30 years old and about 12 inches in diameter. These trees typically supply about one tap. The process begins when someone drills a hole within the actual sugar maple tree. This hole is drilled into the sapwood which is responsible for carrying nutrients and water from the roots of the tree up to the tree canopy. Drilling into the tree does no lasting damage as we only collect about 10% of the sap that the tree produces. A single tree can produce about 10 to 20 gallons in a single season. This may seem like a lot, but in order to make one gallon of maple syrup, we have to collect 40 gallons of maple sap. After they drill in, they'll insert what is called a spile. A spile is a spigot type tool that is hollow and allows for the sap to then flow directly into a bucket that is placed on the tree with a hood over top in order to keep debris out of the sap. 
Now the sap at this point has a very low sugar content. This is because maple sap only contains about 2% sugar. Maple syrup itself contains about 66% sugar. Behind me is a stove that we actually use for making our maple syrup here at the Cuga Nature Center. Typically when it's active there'll be a fire that's built in the lower part with the evaporator tray on top. The maple sap is then put into the tray and the fire is then stocked to produce a lot of heat. This heat will then allow the sap to heat up and the water will then evaporate out of the sap. We'll wait until the sap is about 66% sugar or more and then it will be finished and we can properly call it maple syrup. There's been a lot of debate over how climate change will affect the production of maple syrup in the Northeast. Researchers at Cornell looked at the flow rate of sap and compared it to daily temperatures. In order for the sap to flow, nighttime temperatures ha must reach just below freezing at about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Daytime temperatures must then reach above freezing at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What researchers found was that the number of days in which these optimal temperatures are reached will decrease over time. In this area, we might see two days lost to our maple tapping season by 2030. In areas like Maine, they may as lose as many as 10 days in their maple tapping season. What they also found was that by the year 2100, the actual season for maple tapping will occur earlier in the year. Typically, the season for maple tapping occurs over an eight-week period. This starts in February and goes until the end of March. By 2100, the season may start as early as January.